Hi, this is Josh with Tioma Systems. In our last video, we covered some of the more basic features of Avaya's IP office. Today, we're going to build a little bit on that, and here to do that is our telephony engineer, Joe Falleri. So for this demonstration, we'll again be using the Avaya 9608G IP telephone, but pretty much any of the 9500 series phones or 9600 series phones, uh, most of what we're talking about will apply there. So for this video, we're going to talk about the context button, the home or menu button, the caller ID history button, and the message button, which is going to get you to your visual voicemail screen. So we'll start with contacts. When you press your contacts button, by default, it's going to take you and show you all the contacts available on the telephone. Um, this would be any internal users, any groups on the system, any personal contacts stored on the device, along with any external contacts programmed into the system. We can certainly use our arrow keys to scroll down and uh, get to all the different contacts available on the device. Uh, but it's usually easier to just use the dial pad below to spell the name that you're looking for. So I'm going to hit the 5 because it has the J on it. I'm going to hit the 6 because it has the O on it. And you can see I'm now matching to people that have those letters in their name. Now from the buttons available below the display, I can make a selection to call that person. I can hit details to see additional information about that person. Um, now that I've selected that entry, I can go back to the list. The key here is to pay attention to the four buttons below the display, no matter what you're doing. And any of the things that we're going to talk about here today, for the most part, they do a really good job of guiding you through and letting you know which options are available. I'm going to clear out my search entries and go back to that main list. I do also have a little left and right arrow button up here in the top right corner. That's telling me there's more pages of information available um, that I can access using my left and right arrow buttons here. If I hit my right arrow button, it's going to take me and just show me my personal contacts available on the phone. You see one of my options down below here is new. So if I press that, I have the ability to enter a name and a telephone number into my personal contact list. That name can be entered by using the dial pad. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to put that name in. It's kind of like the old way you used to send a text message. So if I wanted to put in Josh, I'd hit the 5 because it has the J on the first position. I'd hit the 6 three times to put in an O. I'd hit the 7 four times to get to the H, the 4 twice to get to the uh, to the H, sorry. And then you'd notice the 0 has a space bar indicator over it. So I can hit that space key, and then I could start putting in a last name if I wanted to. Once I've got the name inputted, uh, input, I can enter a number. Um, if you have any system dialog codes, make sure to include them here. So if you need to dial 9 to make an outside call, you're going to need to include that 9 in your outbound dial sequence here. So... Once we add a, n a number, we can hit save. And you can see now that that contact is listed in my personal contacts. We're going to show you a way in a little bit how you can pull a number from your caller ID log and insert that information directly into your personal contacts. More to come on that in a minute. Um, if I hit my right arrow again, now I'm just looking at my external contacts. Now these are um, contacts that are input on the system level uh, by the system administrator. So. These are global contacts that show up on every phone. So if you've got contacts that um, are pertinent to everybody, um, instead of everybody entering them as a personal contact, we can input them on the system level. Right arrow again is going to take me and just show me all the users on the system. Right arrow again, just the groups. And now we're back to all of our contacts. So that's a quick look at the contact functionality available on the phone. I'm going to hit this button here. This is kind of like uh, a home button that brings me back out to my main display. Now that we've talked about contacts, we're going to move on to the menu button, or the home button as it's labeled here. When I press that, it's going to launch this menu here on the phone. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, but I will show you one thing that people do commonly ask for. So I hit that home button. If I go to options and settings, I can scroll down to screen and sound options. Here we can adjust the brightness and the contrast of the phone. We can also change the ringer. So if I select OK, you can see I get some options to change my ring type. I've got this button down here that says classic, switches me over to more a traditional ringer. Once I have a ringtone that I like, I can hit the save button and it's going to save that change. You can also do things in here like turn the button clicks off on the phone, you may be able to hear it. You can turn those off, things like that. Uh, so just some ways to customize your phone a little bit available here from this home or menu button. Moving on, we're going to talk about your history button here. So this is a caller ID log. If you ever see that lit up red, it's telling you that you have a new missed call in your caller ID log. 
Right now mine's not red, so I have no new missed calls. When I press it, it's gonna take me and show me every uh, entry in my color ID log. So all my call history, this would be all my inbound, outbound, missed, and answered calls. Again, I can scroll down and see things that happened further back in time. I can hit call to call that number back. I can hit details to see some additional information about that call. And certainly now I could delete it. I can go back to the list. You get the idea. Again, pay close attention to these buttons down at the bottom. They're gonna help guide you through uh, what options are available to you. Once again, I have my left and right arrow buttons telling me there's more pages of information available. Right arrow is gonna take me and show me just my missed calls. Right arrow again, just my incoming calls. Right arrow again, just my outgoing calls. And right arrow again, back to that main list. So I'm gonna scroll over real quick to my incoming calls. So we mentioned earlier when we were talking about contacts that we could pull information in from our caller ID log and save them as personal contacts. If I highlight an entry and I hit the more key here, I get an option that says plus contacts. So if I were to press the plus contacts, it's gonna pull that name and that phone number in to add it to my personal contacts. I can certainly edit this information if I didn't want to have these quotation marks there. I can delete them. Or maybe I need to add a nine in front of the phone number so I could scroll back over here, add a nine and a one. Now if I save it and I go back over to my personal contacts, you will see that it added that in, in there for me. So a little bit easier way to pull names and numbers in um, as opposed to typing them out with the dial pad. Uh, so that is kind of a quick overview of the call history button. I'm gonna exit back out by hitting that phone button and we're gonna move over to visual voicemail. So when I press my message button here, it launches the visual voicemail application. You can see the top option is listen, that's my mailbox. If I had access to any hunt group mailboxes, they would be listed below there and it would show me the name of the group, but it would work the exact same way that the personal mailbox works. So I'm gonna go into my mailbox and I can see that I have zero new messages, zero old messages and one saved message. I'm gonna scroll down and look at that saved message. It's gonna tell me who it came from, the time and date that it came in, and you can see I've got some options. I can play it, I can delete it, or I can send a copy of it to somebody else. So kind of like forwarding a message to another user. Um, if this were a new message after I listened to it, if I did not delete it, it would go into that old mailbox. So if you really do wanna hold on to a message after you listen to it, you would hit the save option located down below. Um, we'll back out here for a second. Now message here, this, this option is, would allow you to record a message and send it to either one user or multiple users. So you could record a message in here and after you record it, oops, after you record it, you could then select people that you wanted to send it to. So I'd hit record, record my message, and then it would ask me who I wanted to send it to. And again, anytime you're in visual voicemail here, pay close attention to these guys. You're gonna, you're gonna get all the different things that you can do um, when you're in there. We've got our greeting, so this is the personal greeting that people hear when they call your mailbox. If you ever wanted to update that greeting, just hit your greeting, uh, select your greeting option, hit record. Once you record it, you've reached the desk of Joe, I'm unavailable. You would hit submit, and that would make that greeting active. If you wanna listen back to it, hit listen. If you wanted to delete it, hit delete, and then you could record it again. Passcode, this would allow you to update or set the voicemail password associated with your voicemail. We've got email options here, as long as the system administrator has put your email address into the system um, and has set up all the backend things that make voicemail to email work, you can choose to have your email copied, where it leaves a copy of it on your phone, sends a copy of it to your email. You can set it to forward, so that voicemail is no longer stored on your phone, it's only available in your email. You can do an alert where the voicemail is stored on the phone. It's gonna send you an email alerting you that you have a new message available from your desk phone. Or you can turn it off, so that would just make it so that your voicemail is available on the phone and on the phone only, um, and would not be sent to your voicemail. The last option down here allows you to turn your voicemail off. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd really wanna do that, but you certainly have the ability to turn your voicemail off, and then if somebody called you, your voicemail is not gonna pick up. So that's a quick rundown on the visual voicemail interface. One other thing I always like to tell people is the first time they go to set that mailbox up, 
You can use the default system voicemail access code, which is star 17. Welcome to a VIA IP office. For help at any time, press star H. If you're doing this from your own phone, and pound key. when you're prompted for an extension, you can just hit pound. Enter password. And when you're prompted for a password, you're going to put in whatever password is currently associated with your extension. It may be nothing like mine is, or your system administrator would have probably given you what the default is. You'd put that in, hit pound. Please enter new password and pound key. At that point, it's going to prompt you to set that password. After you do that, it's going to prompt you to record your name. Um, and then really your mailbox is set up. You've got your name recorded, you've got your password set, you're good to go. So that's a quick overview on a few additional features available on the 9608 phones and really all the 95 and 9600 series phones. Hope that you found this helpful and uh, we'll talk to you soon.